Uh, well, the definition of feng shui, if you were to compare the definitions everybody's using now to traditional feng shui, um, the biggest difference is the same difference we find in modern medicine and traditional medicine. That is that feng shui now, the modern popular idea is all pathological. We're looking for the problem, we're looking for the obstructions, we're looking for the curses, we're looking for whatever. Um, which is a misunderstanding, basically, of traditional feng shui, which is to assess what's good about something. To actually develop an eye for what's valuable, or meaningful. So we're always looking for the pathology. I think that's a misunderstanding. I think the very the historical basis of feng shui was uh, the creation of a harmonious society, creation of nationalism, of tribalism, all of those kinds of things. That's one aspect. If we were just looking at it from an entirely technical point of view, um, so, technically speaking, becoming a technician who destroys pathology is not mastering feng shui. Because in a sense, by mastering these pathologies, you generate them. <laughs> so, uh, so what's the other possibility then? If it's not going to be ever going to be all candy ass new age, uh, you know, finding what's wonderful about everything and then hugging and going home, or are we actually just looking at nature from a wisdom point of view? So I sometimes refer to feng shui as one of the wisdom sciences of Chinese tradition. Um, what does that mean? And it doesn't mean that wisdom is now a new expert field. I'm a wisdom expert with a diploma or something, but it's uh, that anything you study that offers a kind of insight into the real situation we're in uh, provides wisdom. No matter what the diagnosis is, whether it's advantageous or disadvantageous, whether it's auspicious or inauspicious, Wisdom sees both. That doesn't have a big uh, preference for one or the other. So if we studied uh, feng shui properly, which is actually a kind of astronomy, astrology, geomancy in the West, we don't really have feng shui in the West. We have a sort of either or. We have astrology and Geomancy, but we don't have them combined quite as beautifully as the Chinese tradition. So if we did both of those, we're actually saying um, that we are in time and space. So where and when are we? And what would be appropriate? Not what would, pot what would always give me advantage. That's madness. Just where am I? when am I, kind of thing. But eventually, by understanding that, then we can be spontaneous, meaning we find our own natural quality. Um, so we're not really uh, requiring a pillared mansion and uh, film star girlfriends and tons of money in the bank. That's an antidote to a pathology that may not be the case. Um, instead, the idea of mantic arts or divination arts in China is to find ourselves where we are. You know, like, let's get a little uh, extra information about what is the situation we're in, and then what does it suggest in terms of our conduct or behavior, etc. If we even get C's in that kind of function, <laughs> <laughs> then we get wisdom. If we get A's in pathology feng shui, we're just a hazard, making trouble for everyone, supporting their negativity.
And if the negativity is really strong, phew, I mean, it destroys you to be a feng shui consultant. So it's the, it's the antithesis of wisdom.